I'll have okay. I'll have that if you have question also at the end. Uh, I, I think we will have time uh, to answer them. Uh, as Fatou said, today we're going to talk about how to generate and predict uh, multivariate time series, uh, which is really a much more applicate than a theoretical proof of convergence. So that's what we're going to do today. More applied works. Um, First, I'll introduce the time series forecasting in a general context and uh, to and I'll present the objective of what we're trying to accomplish. I'll finish by presenting our, our proposed solution, which is a Python spike edge that can be used to generate and predict time series. Okay, so let's start. Okay. First, what is a time series? Simply put, it is a series of observation uh, indexed with time. At time t, uh, we can define xt to be the realization of some random variable capital xt. I'll give some uh, example of observed time series. Uh, there are multiple application in every domain. I've choose to focus on econometric examples. Here we have the 15 year fixed rate mortgage average in the US. At every single point in time, we can see that the observed value change in the graph. And that's an example. Another example would be here to the left, the uh, Canadian to US dollar exchange rate. It fluctuates through time with no clear trend. Unlike on the right side here, the gross domestic product of Canada since 1961, which is clearly upward trending. Um, and given those data, we could try to predict future value. For example, uh, we observe those value and we can try to, uh, for example, predict the exchange rate of next year, let's say 2023. This would be an example of time series forecasting, which is the subject of today's presentation. Uh, what is the time series forecasting? It is to um, predict future realization based on past observation. Those predictions could be, can be uh, deterministic or probabilistic, depending on the model views. And recent development in machine learning has accelerated the number of model to investigate. Therefore, it is often needed to compare different models to understand their relative strengths and weaknesses. So the objective today is to do model comparison, but what do we need to compare? First, the prediction quality on the representative data set is, could be thought as important. Uh, then the robustness, in other words, how does the model behave when the experimental context changes? Also computational performances could be important for certain applications. And finally, data requirements. For example, in a real life application, it will be interesting to discriminate between the model according to the size of the available data set before diving into the details of the model and do some fine tunings in that. So how do we measure um, model to compare them? We need to measure them. So how do we measure them? Um, I propose a simple method here. We start by generating a time series. Why? Because with simulated data, the environment is controlled by the user, and it is easier to make simple tests and to assess theoretical performances of a model. In a way, it can be viewed as a way to benchmark. Then we can train the model on the data. Uh, for example, the simulated data I just talked about. But also, you can use historical data if available. Um, fin uh, finally, no, not sorry, before that, we predict using the model. And finally, we calculate the metrics of uh, those predictions, how well, uh, for example, those prediction uh, were they accurate and, and all those kind of metrics. Obviously, you can repeat some of those steps multiple times if it is needed. Uh, 
that is the general approach I'm presenting, but uh, I'll, I'll prefer presenting you a practical implementation. That's what we're here to do. I'm presenting you a TS Bench, which is a multivariate time series simulator where the user can experiment with multiple models to measure and understand their characteristics. Uh, it is written in Python and will be available at this address. It uses external packages for the training and forecasting of models. Um, here uh, in Python, those are the one currently used. And also there is a bridge with R and those packages. And for the generator part of the package. Uh, today, I'll just focus on two classical models. The first one would be an ARMA. Um, we define the time series process as follow. The variable x at time t would be the average of its previous value plus an error ter term here. Um, an interesting property of ARMA is that it is mean reverting. That's a thing to keep in mind. Um, the second classical model, which uh, I've used in the package, is a GARCH. Here we define the HT, the conditional uh, variance of the error. Uh, basically, this conditional uh, variance can be seen as an ARMA process. I've we written the full formula uh, in the same form to make it clearer. The main property of a GARCH model is that the observed time series, here it will be epsilon, the, the error term, would, be, uh, would have a time-dependent variance, which is uh, something that can sometimes be hard for models to, to capture, which is why it is a sensible classical uh, model to benchmark with. Um, so those two models, uh, in a few minutes, I'll show you uh, their generation, uh, simulated data with them. And then uh, I'm going to show you some other models used to train on that, on those simulation, simulated data. Um, I'll do that in a second in the, in the notebook. Uh, to show a little simple implementation, a little application, sorry, of a TS Bench. But first, uh, let's look at some principle behind this package, what it is trying to accomplish. First, it is it tries to be simple. Uh, it is uh, with good documented, well documented, with uh, implemented model as example, and. You can use those models without prior knowledge using because the, the package use sensible default value. And if you want more theoretical details, there are some literature reviews uh, in the package you know, available as PDF. It is trying to be general. You can use historical data and simulated dat data. I think both have their places. It can use multivariate variables, latent variables, and it is easy to extend the, the available matrix and model with new matrix and models. So in that sense, it is general. And uh, it, it is trying to be efficient uh, with this modularity. modularity. Uh, every component can be replaced or use as its own, uh, eliminating maybe uh, some redundant uh, operation. And uh, there is some level of sub-process parallelization, not uh, a little parallelization power right now. And I'll show you uh, the notebook that will illustrate some of those points uh, right now. So I'll just switch to the notebook. Um, okay, so this is a simple application of TS Bench. So first, let's import the package. 
And then we initialize the experiment. Uh, this uh, creates the necessary folders. It generates the template for the setting file, which uh, we can look here. Uh, in the setting file, you see the generate keyword here and the train keywords. Generate will be the model used to generate the data set. So the simulation part of the experiment. And train will be the model used uh, on the data set uh, available. So the, the, the model we want to use to forecast the time series. Um, we can change those models to take more interesting model for uh, the presentation today. Um, well, I'll show you later within the output uh, some of those models. Then using those settings I just shown you, we can run the experiment. We can start it by generating the da data. Again, uh, here are the, the model used in the generate keyword in the setting file. Same here for the train models. They are the training model defined uh, for this experiment. Then we train and we forecast. So here, let's do a 10 step ahead forecast. So what, what I mean by it is you forecast steps 10, 10 step ahead, then you observe data up to that point and you repeat the process. Okay, you, you'll see in just a second in the output, uh, a, a better illustration of what I mean. But for now, that's how I'll describe uh, this type of process here. Uh, obviously, uh, this can be all changed in the settings file, but a lot of parameter here can be uh, changed for the given experiment you want to run. And you just output the result, nothing, uh, nothing to say here. Um, so now I'll use uh, IPI widget to select the desired output and select what we need and to show you some of the, some good looking uh, plots to see uh, what actually we have generated. Um, so okay, for I'll just rerun that for good measure. Uh, so it can take a little while, but here basically um, it is just taking the da data and filtering it according to those, um, those settings. It is not rerunning the training and forecasting process of the, the models. This was all done in the function be before. That's a little example of modularity here. We're just outputting what we need to output. So we just output the plots. Uh, to show you. So there are a lot of plot. Okay, here, uh, just give me a second. Uh, those are the metrics for the, the next example. I haven't changed those. I think I just need to rerun the cell. This is the beauty of uh, a notebook. It, sometimes it remembers the thing you've just run. So just, just take a second to uh, output it again. Okay, now you see the metric has changed. So the next step, I'll show you how to change the metric, uh, as you could have guessed. But here, I'm using the mean average error and the mean average percentage error as simple metrics, just to illustrate the point. Um, let's... Um, Let's use the ARMA dataset. So here we can choose basically which experiment we want to output. The a lot of parameters I haven't talked about that are more explained in the package documentation. But here let's just focus on the dataset and the model part. So let's use the ARMA 11 dataset, and let's say we want to see how uh, ARMA 11 would perform on this data set, and how maybe a last value and the random forest would perform on this data set. So 
let's for another time rerun the output. We'll just take a second. Um, so let's just maybe talk about the last value. Last value would predict the last observed value. Uh, I'll, I put it there to illustrate a point. And the random forest is the scikit-learn implementation of the regressor um, random forest. So let's jump to the last value, which I'll zoom in a little bit. So what I'll do here is that I'll, here are the past observation uh, in blue and in orange, there is the forecasted one. To see a little more uh, in the forecasting region, we'll just focus in the year, year 2025, which is just what I've, I, I indexed those time series. So I'll just zoom it a little bit on those uh, on those years. So you can just go here in the widget, go 2025, take, take the date. Um, and again, we need to regenerate the output because um, it needs to uh, redo the plot. OK. So now it's just the zoom in version of what we what we had before. And if we go to the ARMA observation, so the ARMA data set with the last value used as the forecast. Here, the point I'm trying to, to show is the uh, what I was uh, talking about earlier about the 10 step ahead forecast. For example, here we see at this point, the model observed the last value. And for the next 10 steps, it forecasted its last observed value, which, uh, which is why it's called last value model. Uh, and afterward, it observed a new uh, value. And then it repeats the process of forecasting that step ahead. And it does that for every interval, uh, which is why it's, I call it, uh, it's in the package, it's called a rolling forecast. Uh, so that's the last value, the ARMA on ARMA. Uh, so it's performing pretty well. And the random forest on the same data set. Uh, so those are the graph. We can look at the mean average error. The percentage error can be a little bit misleading here. Uh, we see the ARMA is performing poorly because the lower, the better. So here, uh, because of a lot, there is a lot of zeros. The mean percentage error can be a little uh, off, uh, but you see Alma performing pretty well with the mean average error. So we can do the same thing for another data set. Let's say a Garch, just quickly. So here we see that Alma is not predicting really well the Garch because uh, that's 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 all Garch difficult it is. Um, the last value and the random forest. And we can look again at the mean average error. Uh, the mean percentage error for ARMA is quite high because there's a lot of zero. Um, so maybe that's why we would want to use maybe another metric. That's as the next step we could look at. So let's just run here, just a second. A little bit of display uh, error here, but, oh, sorry, I think, I think it will work. Yeah. So now we just compute uh, two types of metrics. So the mean average square error and the symmetric mean average percentage error, I think, if I remember correctly. And here is just the average of those two. Uh, so maybe we can take uh, the Garch example again, the Garch data set for the model of ARMA last value in forest, random forest, taking again the year 2025, just to have a better look 
at the output. <clears throat> and well, yeah, okay. Sorry, I've misselected the models. Okay, so we can see again the those same graphics, but what has changed now is the matrix hues. I've just defined those, um, and if we look at Arma, uh, if we compare uh, the Arma model to on it, uh, and the sorry the random forest model, we see uh, on the average metric defined here, the random forest outperforms a little bit the Arma, uh, and the last value is uh, probably predicting zeros, which is why um, it is not very well defined for this metric. But uh, again, if we just focus on Arma and Random Forest, it is visually clear that the Random Forest should outperform a little bit the Arma for the RS Garch observation. Uh, so I think this metric captured this property a little bit better than the metric before. And if you would prefer another type of metrics, well, you can always add that uh, another metric in the uh, in the model as I did in the step earlier here, which was not really that much complicated. It's just to pass the metric on the output function function. And also, I've not touched on it uh, on this notebook for simplicity purposes, but you can very well define your own class. Uh, you just need a model. Your model needs to uh, have a training method and a forecasting method. So you need to be your model needs to be able to learn from a given se series, and you uh, just need uh, a way to forecast x step ahead. For so in this example, it will be ten step ahead, but your model needs to, uh, in general, forecast ten step ahead. A t step ahead, for example. And once you have that, you can easily add this model in this framework and run the same kind of experiment and just go in, the, in this kind of output and just see how it performs against other model. And this is kind of the purposes of the package is to streamline a little bit the process of uh, comparing models if you have a given you have a given model that you can uh, train and forecast you can just add it there and it will do you 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 can visualize visualize it properly and uh, see how it performs on simulated data and also another facet i haven't touched here is the uh, real data part so you can add real data you just need to uh, to format them properly, and also the multivariate aspect. So you can just fix the dimensions of the you're interested in, in. And there are a lot of generator model defined in the package that are multivariate, uh, and also that have a um, latent variable. For example, here, the Garch um, process, you could see uh, the volatility in the Garch process as a latent variable. Uh, but here it is not uh, proposed because the model used for training do not have um, uh, latent variable uh, targeted targeting uh, volatility. Uh, so uh, if you, your model has this kind of um, this kind of properties, it will be reflected in this output. So that's pretty much what I had to share with you today. Uh, I think it's been 
30 minutes. So I, we have times for questions. Uh, I see a hand. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, Francis. Um, I, I, uh, I was wondering. So a lot of these things that you're simulating, like Armar and Garch, uh, mm -hmm. if you have full knowledge of the parameters, you, you, um, uh, you kind of, uh, you, you can ex, uh, kind of predict or, or forecast, like kind of get the best theoretical forecast, right, for the or the expected value for for the process. Uh, so, uh, in a sense, there's a kind of theoretical best prediction that you could that you could come up with. Uh, have you considered using, like, also by like comparing uh, that as a benchmark as well? Um, I'm not sure what you mean because if you have, let's say, uh, Arma, yeah. well, the best predictor okay. for that Arma is the, the the Arma with the same parameters. Yes, we we agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you, you, you're, you're forecasting, right? So you, you're, mm -hmm, you're, mm -hmm. you're forecasting some data, right? So if you, mm -hmm. if you know the true process, mm -hmm. you can compute the expected value, say, ten periods later. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, it, this is kind of what you're trying to do, right? You, yes, yes. Yeah, well, yeah, it will be an interesting benchmark. Yeah, it is not done, but yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, it will be an interesting benchmark. Yes. So that's, but that's kind of the idea of this package is to, there are some sensible tests uh, as the one you, you've just des described. And this sensible text can be done uh, and there are other. So the idea was to kind of put them all in this package. So once you have this test, mm -hmm. you can test it on with different models. So yeah, but it will be a, a, nice, uh, a nice feature to have. Uh, okay, I have the question for the GitHub package. I'll just uh, I'll just pull it up. But first, I'll just say it again that if you go to that link right now, you just see an empty GitHub uh, page uh, because it is not available as I'm speaking right now. But it will be given. Uh, in, in a few days or a few weeks, uh, I just need uh, some something to change in the uh, my private uh, pri private implementation. I just need to say, change some things, but uh, yeah, it will be available at this address. And if it, the link works, it's just an empty uh, GitHub package. And the idea to make it open source also is you're welcome to contribute if you're really interested in this kind of work. Um, idea will be welcome. Any questions to Francis? Okay. 
Francis, do you have something more to add? Uh, but, well, I'll just repeat what I just said. If you're really interested in this, in the development of this package, uh, contribution will be welcome. And that's what I had to say. <laughs> Thank you again for having me. Thank you so much for the talk. It was very interesting. So, uh, do you want? Uh, do you agree to share the the PDF with the participants? Yes, of course. Of course. Okay. So thank and you. I'll so send it uh, to you. Exactly. Okay. Thank you okay. so much. So have a great weekend, everybody, and thank you again, Francis. Thank you. Bye.